الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على رسوله الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله today we are on the 14th day almost the mid part of Ramadan Alhamdulillah so um, we will be dealing with two surahs here Surah Al-Hijr and uh, Surah Al-Nahl inshallah so to begin with Surah Al-Hijr ayah number two Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Rubama ya waddu al-ladhina kafaru law kanu muslimin soon the time will come when people or unbelievers will say that wish we were muslims so allah is going to give us a warning here or he's going to give us a context what is going to happen one particular time that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to make us reflect okay a day will come where we will try to tell we will be telling allah that i wish we were muslims or we wish we were muslims no matter what are the signs or no matter what kind of warnings we've got we are not cat- we are not catering into all that we are not even taking any heed now allah is telling a day will come where you will be regretting for your mistake you know what has happened what happens uh, nowadays you, you might have seen when we were in the when we were in the classroom or you know even we have felt somewhere that uh, after the exams what happens after the exams oh looking at the marks we feel i wish i had learned a little more or i wish i had done i had written this answer i wish i i had little sense while writing i should have done this i should have not written like this i should have written in that way i should have drawn the picture like this right now these are some of the things thoughts that come to our mind but it's too late at that particular point of time however the marks which which is given right now whatever the, the marks we have received only that we are going to get in the marks card right we are not going to get anything else now allah is telling the same scenario he is telling that you would regret on you know one particular time at one times where at one time where you feel that oh i wish i was i was a muslim i were a muslim at that part of time whatever people have uh, told i should have believed in it my friend had given me warnings my relative or somebody had told this to me but i didn't i didn't listen to it i didn't take any heed now allah is telling that there will be a time where you will reflect on all that thoughts and you feel oh i wish i had done this but the time it's almost you're going to lose that you're not going to get anything out of it then he says as for the admonition indeed it is we who have revealed it and it is indeed we who are its guardians now allah is talking about the quran allah is telling that quran was revealed only for the purpose of advising or admonishing and warning it is for people who understand about it who understand in depth what exactly is a human i mean what is what exactly a human has to do human being has to do next uh, surah uh, hijr again ayah number 9 allah says as for the admonition or for the advice indeed it is we who have revealed it and it is we who are going to guard it or we are the guardians now allah is talking about the quran here why is allah telling this he says he is trying to justify what is the reason for revealing surahs or revealing the quran to human beings it's nothing but the means to advise to advise people or to give a guidance to make them understand what to do and what not so what are your obligations how to lead a life everything is mentioned in this particular quran it's a set of rules or it is a guidelines for you to follow in this particular world okay so that you can attain something in the hereafter as well so this is the pathway now allah is telling that it is we who have revealed it and we didn't we just don't, didn't reveal and leave it we are the ones who are going to guard it as well so we are the guardians now harun al rashid there was an incident that happened uh, in the life uh, during the time of harun al rashid so here a man was trying to uh, write he was a scribe actually he met harun uh, harun al rashid once and uh, in that particular year Harun tried uh, Harun uh, Al Rashid tried to convince him to embrace Islam but being a scribe he said no i'm not going to embrace Islam he was not convinced of course somehow that was not the right time maybe and um, it so happened that uh, he started writing the holy scriptures okay he wrote Taurat 
and uh, it was said that when he started writing it and he, he he went to the market and he sold his books and his books were selling like you know hot cakes everybody started buying and you know they were all convinced they said okay no problem but actually this man knew that there were some alterations here alterations done in this particular book even injil he did the same thing he wrote injil it was it was very good in calligraphy he wrote, he wrote injil also and uh, he gave it in the market he sold it and all of them most of them bought it although they knew that these alterations were done and he tres- he tested the same with the quran quran also he altered few ayahs and you know what wherever he wanted he did all that changes went to the market fortunately nobody bought it now what happened they were able to say that okay they were able to take some faults find the faults in these ayahs okay this is wrong this is a mistake that you've done so try to correct it we are not going to buy it from you so take it that's what people started talking about it and then he was he was shocked he felt okay what should i do i have done this i have ordered it i know i have ordered it but not a single copy got sold out so why did this happen we have to understand this is a proof that allah himself is a guardian and nobody else now we know about hafaz right you know there are so many people who are trying to memorize the quran but can we find a similar number of people who are memorizing taurat and injil as well no so this is the proof that allah is going to guard this particular quran himself my lord in the ma- iblis said my lord in the manner you led me to error i will make things very attractive or not and then lead them to error now what does it mean allah is telling here that iblis is trying to blame allah for the mistakes that you have done now whatever you have done that is allah allah is being blamed here for what what has allah betrayed now it is not about allah's mistake we know very well subhanallah allah is free from all faults but now when iblis is trying to blame him he is trying to mention that i want to make everything clear or i want to make all these things attractive and make all your human beings all your uh, slaves to attract towards this dunya we know very well what happens exactly when we are watching movies you know almost 3 hours of movie is is very interesting but half an hour any lecture anything that is good anything you know you want to advise people or you want to listen to somebody lectures or you you want to do something good no you want to spend on all the things that that allah has given okay so we want we want to spend on food we want to spend on clothing we want to sh- spend on uh, weddings parties and everything but when it comes to charity oh 10 rupees too much yeah why do you want to spend right so these things seems to be uninteresting or unattractive compared to that of the worldly pleasures so this is what we have to understand now Allah is telling that it is Iblis who is making you attractive, look attractive of all these, you know, these uh, worldly pleasures, and it's we we need to understand and introspect which one should I opt for? What is the best for me in this world and the after? In uh, Surah An-Nahl, Allah says in ayah number three, "خلق السماوات والأرض بالحق تعالى ما يشركه." We He has created the heavens and the earth. with truth and whatever now people are talking about his uh, he are, they are associating him he is above all or the greatness of allah is above all now this we have to understand there is no th- nothing that can be compared with allah subhanahu wa taala and his greatness the ultimate or he is the supreme power he is the one who has got supreme um or he is the significant i would say now he has created humans he has created uh, um even the earth and the sky out of very insignificant thing maybe like the soil water right so these are the main sources that we have now allah has created everything here with these insignificant substances how can we be ungrateful to all these things then he says we have created animals so that you can carry loads 
you you are able to reach without much hardships you know you can go from one place to you can commute from one place to another or you can you know you don't have much hardships everything is given to you so that you can have you know easy living you can go and live easily that's what our ultimate intention was so i'm not saying that we wanted you to have some ease you wanted you to make your life little bit easier now you are showing in gratitude we have even shown again he is telling the next ayah also he created horses and mules and donkeys just for your ride and also for your adornment maybe for eating you can you can have them as food you can use them for different other purposes right we can use them even as an adornment as a you know uh, uh, maybe for warfare or you can use them for uh, taking your loads and so many other things so everything is happening for the good we are doing it for your purpose but or you don't consider these things to be like a sign for you to reflect and think about he even tells about the different kinds of crops or different plants how do we use them there are so many other benefits that we can get but these things we just consume them we don't we don't feel like showing our gratitude to almighty this is the saddest part we have to be mindful about all these things or we have to be mindful about our own approach then he says it is he it is we who are sending the water down for you from the skies out of which you can drink or you can grow your plants on which you can or you can even pastor your cattle so it may be your cattle you are you are trying to feed your cattle you are trying to feed yourself or you want to grow crops or eat out of them so there are so many benefits out of water out of all that resources that allah is giving us but we are the ones who are trying to waste them we don't know how to use effectively right we don't know how to use water we don't know how to use electricity we don't know how to use the lives or aquatic animals or you know the the land animals that we have we don't we don't know how to use them how to take care of them actually allah has given so when there is an eco- ecological imbalance there will be always some crisis in one way or the other so we have to be mindful about it allah says we have blessed you with all this so make the right use of it the resources that we have given you it may be electricity it may be water <coughs> it may be animals or plants or whatever make use of it in a right man then allah is trying to show the signs again and he has placed the mountains to be very firm so that the earth will not move the earth cannot move because it is like a peg allah says that mountains are like pegs or like nails which is firmly rooted so that the earth will stay stable and then it is also said that we have made rivers so that you can track your water water sources are just for you to track your ways or you can you can see your pathways where are you going so you can track all your paths so it says we know about the lighthouses that we have you know how the stars are used and uh, lighthouses are used so that you can get some idea about the journey so all these things are given but what happens all these landmarks all these rivers rocks and mountains everything is said to be the sign for us to understand but a creator cannot be similar to a non creator how can we create our you know how can how can we be similar to a non creator that's what allah is asking here we have to be mindful about all these things showing gratitude to allah showing our thanks is very important for the death at least try to make sure make sure that we are showing our gratitude to allah thanking all for all that what he has given us allah says in ayah number 28 unbelievers who when the angel sees them and cause them to die while they are engaged in their wrong doings they will profess they, they will proffer their submission saying that we were engaged in no evil we were not doing anything evil surely allah knows well all that you did now allah is telling the state of uh, unbelievers during the time of death so even when allah is going to see us them or angels are going to see us their their life or on the verge of death what do they do 
we were just having fun here yeah? it's not an evil we have not committed anything wrong that's what they start telling now this is very important now when you are not mindful about your own actions we are not mindful about our words we are not mindful about our our thoughts it becomes very easy for us to understand all these things and we just go on telling that okay that's not any there's nothing wrong in it i'm not doing anything harm i'm not harming anybody i'm not i'm not uh, you know doing anything which is evil but on the in the contrary when when the same thing happens with a believer what happens they are the ones who are very submissive they try to look into their actions again and again and try to introspect did i do something wrong despite of having all the uh, you know their actions are always right but they do take care of it where that you know they feel that okay i have not committed any mistake they just want to make sure that actions are not you know anywhere wrong abu umar the long one who used to do this you may be knowing about it he used to whip himself at the back and uh, he was telling that okay i am i'm scared if allah is going to punish me on the day of judgment so let me punish myself for all that mistakes that i have done i don't want to i don't want to carry it forward to my akhirah so these were the no this was the difference that you could find in believers and disbelievers whenever they committed any mistake believers used to not take any like, heed of it they, they would not care for their mistakes whereas on the other hand the the uh, believers the the believers were the one who used to uh, take care of all that minute things also what has happened or what they are taking what what actions they are doing and what what are the words they are uttering so everything you know is to matter is mattering a lot to believers so let us all get included in the category of these believers who are humble and also who are submissive and trying to take care of all that precautions that Allah has asked us to and may Allah make it easy for all of us to carry our good deeds and present our good deeds in the right hand inshallah in the afterlife